स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Okay, so now we'll do a second application of uh, the principle that we talked about earlier, the fixed point principle. So the proposition, let me recall the fixed point principle this time. G is a finite group acting on a finite set X and G is a P group. Then we said the cardinality of X. So here everything is finite. Cardinality of X and the cardinality of the set of fixed points are congruent to each other modulo p. Okay, so this was the principle and now we had one nice application of this last time which was the a proof of Fermat's little theorem. Now here is a second application of this again sort of a number theoretic statement. So it says the following uh, let n and r be some natural numbers p is a prime the same prime that we have fixed throughout then the binomial coefficient p n choose p r is congruent to the binomial coefficient n choose r mod p. Okay. So, uh, recall the binomial coefficient n choose r by definition is just the number of ways of choosing r objects from n objects. So, that is just n factorial by r factorial n minus r factorial number of ways of choosing n distinguishable objects from which you have to pick r. Okay. So, now uh, the statement here is really something about uh, you know the fact that these two numbers are always congruent to each other number of ways of picking p r things from p n things and the number of ways of choosing r from n they turn out well they won't be equal of course, but uh, they are congruent to each other when you look at them modulo the prime p. Okay, so, let us prove this again as an instance of this fixed point principle. So, what I mean going to try and do well the same thing we did earlier we will try and construct a set X whose cardinality is the left hand side P n choose P r and we will construct a group a P group action on it such that the set of fixed points gives you the right hand side n choose r. Okay. So, we have to manufacture uh, the following two things we need to manufacture a group G and we need to manufacture a set X such that its cardinality is P n choose P r. Right? That is the first step and then we must hope that the, the fixed point set turns out to be the right hand side. Okay, so, let us do this. So, for a start again uh, like last time I will just in the previous example let us just pick the simplest cyclic group of cardinality P as our P group. So, this is just 1 sigma sigma square sigma to the p minus 1. So, of course, this is a p group and now I need to construct a set whose cardinality is p n choose p r. Okay. So, how am I going to choose that set? Well, uh, first let us construct a set of cardinality p n as follows. So, I will uh, think of it in the following manner. So, let us construct a rectangle, a rectangular grid of dots. So, I imagine I have a grid like this okay, and you know so some number of rows, some number of columns. So, let me assume it is got p rows and n columns. Okay, So, I have a rectangular grid of dots. So, of course, this has p n dots in all. Okay, So, I am going to take my z uh, set z to be the set of all the dots in this diagram. So, first my set z is the set of all dots in this grid. Okay, that is my set the elements are the dots. Okay, so, we will try and give some sort of geometrical construction uh, and then of course, having done that uh, the set x itself can be chosen to be uh, you know all subsets of the set z of cardinality p r. Okay, so, that is the next step. So, maybe we should just do this uh, uh, 
you know by way of example just to get a better handle of, on what is going on. So, the proof is uh, best illustrated by an example. So, let, let me actually choose concrete numbers here. Let me take n to be 4, uh, let me take r to be 2 and let me take my prime to be 3 so that I can actually draw, draw a nice figure here. So, let me draw um, the first thing which is my set z. So, what, a, what does z look like? z is all points in a 4 cross 3 grid of dots. So, this is my uh, 4 guys in the first let us see where are we yellow maybe. ok. So, this grid of dots is going to be my, my set z. So, it is got exactly p n dots. So, observe this is a 3 columns and, and I mean 4 columns and 3 rows. So, this is a 3 cross 4 grid of dots. So, the dots themselves are they form the elements of my set z. Okay. So, I have my, my set z here. So, let us uh, copy this. Here is my set z. Okay. Now, uh, what is it that I want to define as my set x? So, x of course, remember has to have cardinality p n choose p r. Okay. So, that is what I know about. So, z has cardinality 12 which is p n in this case. The set x that I am interested in in constructing should have cardinality p n choose p r right which is the number of ways of choosing p r objects out of p n objects. So, this is the number of ways of choosing 6 objects out of 12 objects. So, 6 dots out of these these 12 dots. So, I am going to think of all these 12 dots as being distinguishable objects here. I just colored them with 3 colors to say these are the 3 rows that is it. Okay. So, what should my set x look like? This is just going to be the collection the set of all a subset of z. So, subsets of the dots some collections of dots so that the cardinality of a is 6. In other words, this is the set of all uh, collections of 6 dots out of these 12 collections or sets. So, set of all such collections and observe the cardinality is exactly 12 to 6 because that is the definition of, of the binomial coefficient. Okay. So, what are some examples of, of uh, elements of A for example? So, A is in this case I need 6 dots right. So, let us see suppose I take the 4 guys in the top this one green this. So, this is an example of, of a, 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 a subset A of cardinality 6. So, this, this subset A would be an element of x. Okay. Similarly, maybe I could take these 3 and these 3 together. This is another this is another choice of a and so on. So, you get the idea here. So, I can take these 6 dots or any any collection of 6 dots among these 12 all such collections put together that is my set x that I am going to talk about. Okay. So, I have a set of the correct cardinality. We are only trying to match cardinalities so far. Now, uh, the set x of course, is more complicated than the set z. So, remember the set z was well what was it? It was just the well it was just this grid right. So, this is your set z just single dots x is more complicated the elements of x are now collections of 6 dots at a time. Okay. So, we will come to x, but what is it that we eventually want to do? We want to define an action of the group and remember the group in this case is the cyclic group. So, in this case p was 3 in our example. So, let me try and construct an action of the cyclic group of uh, 3 elements on the set x. But before I do that let us let us first work with z as a starting point. So, so this is what I eventually want to understand how to define an action on x, but for a start let us define an action on z. So, how do you make the cyclic group of 3 elements act on this, this set z of 12 dots? Well, there is one, one obvious action. What is the, the obvious thing you can do? Uh, well, what does C3 look like? C3 has 3 elements remember 1 sigma and sigma square. Okay, sigma is the generator, sigma cube is the identity. How do you make this group act on z? 
well it can sort of cyclically permute the rows of this diagram okay by cyclically permuting rows so what do i mean by that okay so uh, so let's come back to this next let's first figure out how to define an action on z so how do we cyclically permute rows what do i mean by that if i take my element sigma and it acts on this dot here this red dot a well i'll define it to be the dot that's right below that dot here so i'm i'm moving a dot in the first row the action of sigma just takes it to the corresponding dot in the second row so this guy is my a dash for example so similarly how does sigma act on this dot well it just moves it down to this other guy okay now how does sigma act on dots in the second row what does it do to a green dot it just moves it to the corresponding uh, dot on the on the row below so this dot here under sigma so if i call this b dash it'll just move to this dot b double dash okay so if i call the the dots on the first guy as a b c d these are all dashes these are double dashes maybe then the action of sigma is the following it moves the first row to the second row the second row elements to the third row and it moves the third row elements back to the first row okay so sigma a is a dash sigma acting on a dash is a double dash etc so i I've, i've sort of just visually defined what sigma does for you it moves the red dots to the corresponding green dot below it it moves the green dots to the corresponding yellow dot below it and it moves each yellow dot to the red dot which is sort of cyclically below it meaning if you sort of think of it as being on a circle or a cylinder then the yellow dot sort of moves to the corresponding uh, red dot that's going to be in the first row okay so this is what i mean by cyclically permuting rows so this is the action of sigma and of course sigma square will just have to do this twice so what will sigma square do well it will sort of do sigma two times in other words how will it act on a on a red dot well it will move it to the yellow dot which is two steps below it etc right so it's i hope it's visually clear i've tried to you know not make it overly formal so if you if you, of course you want you can sort of write this all out in uh, in in very formal language but for now let's try and understand the main main idea here if i have a grid of dots like this then i can make the cyclic group of um, cardinality 3 act on it by sort of moving my my so here's my grid of dots i act sigma does this it moves each row one row below to the row that's below it okay so this is action of sigma okay now again exercise check that this is an action so check this defines an action of the group g in this case c3 on the set z which is this set of 12 dots okay and of course you can see here there is nothing special about 3 and 12 and so on i could have done this with general n and p and r i mean r hasn't entered the picture yet but i i could have done this with any n and any p the corresponding cyclic group cn uh, the grid now has n rows right or rather p rows and n columns so it has p rows the cyclic group of cardinality p just moves the generator sigma moves each row of dots to the corresponding row below it okay so uh, it's again easy to check that this defines an action that the the two properties of an action are satisfied now let's come to the question we are interested in how does uh, how do we define an action of the cyclic group on the set x here okay so i need an action of c3 not on z itself but i i want to understand how to define an action on x and what was x if you if you remember this was just a set of all six element subsets of z right all collections of six dots so how do i do that well there's again the obvious thing if i have a set of dots so here's my set of dots and uh, let's say i have a collection of six dots so for instance uh, what shall we do so suppose i take these four and these two here's a collection of six dots so if this is my subset a the collection of six dots then 
there is again an action of, of the cyclic group on this by what is called the element wise action. Okay. So, if I have, so this is maybe it is worth writing out as a general thing, uh, a general fact to observe that suppose a group acts on a set X, then the group in fact acts on given this I can make the group act on what is called the power set of X, right, which is the set of all subsets of X. And how do I make it act as follows by if I take a group element G and if I take a subset A of the, the set X, then the definition of the action is just it just acts element by element take each element of A. So, this is this action is defined for every subset of X. In other words, for every element of the power set. Okay, so, this, this action here again check it is an action, this is called the action on subsets. Okay, so, this is the action on subsets of x and this action is just the element wise action, it just acts on every single element of, of the subset and each element will now be transformed to some other element and you take the new collections of elements. So, let us do this by example if A is this collection of 6 dots that I have just marked here, then what is sigma acting on A for example. Okay. So, by definition what does sigma do to these 6 dots? Well, sigma will take, uh, draw this separately. So, what will sigma do to each of these dots? Sigma will take this red dot to this green dot that is right below it. Right. So, this element goes here, this element goes here, this goes here. Well, in fact, this goes here and this green guy goes to the thing below it, this yellow fellow in A goes to the one above it. Okay. So, if I act sigma on each of these elements, what are the new elements I, I get? Well, I get these three green dots, I get this green dot, I get this yellow dot and the yellow dot goes to the red dot above. So, I also get this red dot. So, this new set here which has, let us try it clean this up a little bit. So, the, the action of sigma on A is just obtained by acting sigma on every element of A and seeing what are the new dots that you get. So, that is the, the set sigma A. It is those 4 green dots 1, 2, 3, 4, there is a red dot on top, there is a yellow dot on the bottom. So, this collection of 6 dots is exactly sigma of A, where A was the, the original subset, A was this thing, the thing I had marked originally in blue. Okay. So, I hope the definition is clear, you just act element by element, uh, you, act, you act that group element on each element of the subset. Okay. So, this is called uh, the action on subsets and so what have we done here? To recall, we said we have an action of C3 on the set Z of all dots in the grid and from here we have an action on the subsets. Well, there is an action on all subsets, but in fact you can also restrict this to get an action on subsets of a given cardinality. Okay. So, uh, I mean as is clear if I have a collection of, uh, if I have a subset of Z which has 6 elements and I act a group element on that subset, the new subset also has 6 elements. Okay. So, this is the action of on subsets of a given cardinality. So, anyway this is this is something that uh, you should check in this case that because I have an action of C3 on Z, I also have an action of C3 on X which is the collection of 6 element subsets of Z. So, we have we are close now, we already have a P group and we have an action of that P group on the set X whose cardinality is exactly P and choose P R, this cardinality is P and choose P R. Okay. Now, the question is, uh, I mean now we are we are ready to apply uh, our fixed point principle. So, by our proposition or the fixed point principle, let me call it that. I know that the cardinality of X is congruent to the cardinality of the set of fixed points modulo P. Okay. Now, let us again do it in this example. So, what is our, our set X? X is well, the collection of all 6 element subsets. So, its cardinality is as we know 12 choose 6. 
Now, what is the what are the fixed points? So that's the question. So let's let's try and understand what the fixed points of this look like. So here's a grid again. Okay. So here's the question. Suppose I have a six element subset of these 12 dots. So let's take A to be a subset of this grid of dots and A let's say has six elements. Okay. Now the question is when does A belong to the set of fixed points? What does it mean to say that A is a fixed point? Okay. So let's try and figure that out. If A is a fixed point in particular, A is fixed this means that A is actually fixed by sigma, the generator of the group. Okay. And in fact, this is enough. If it's fixed by sigma, then it's also fixed by sigma squared, sigma cubed and so on. So, but let's just look at this condition. A is fixed by the element sigma of the group. Now, what does this mean? So, if you recall what uh, the action of sigma was, it moved uh, dots in a given row to the corresponding dots in the row below it. Okay. So, which how can I choose six dots? So this is my question. How can I choose six dots from this diagram so that when I move that configuration of six dots one unit down sort of cyclically, the new configuration of six dots coincides with the original configuration of six dots. Okay. So the question is how to choose a configuration. Well, sigma a is a just means that a is a configuration. So let me write it that way. This means a is a collection of six dots. Which remains invariant. Under cyclic. Under the operation of under the action of sigma, right? So which is under cyclic permutation or cyclic rotation, whatever the word is. Okay, so let's just try and look for examples. What does that mean? Right? A must contain some six dots. So let's see. Suppose A contains this red dot. Suppose this dot is an A. Okay. Now what can I say about the, the other five dots? Well observe firstly that A must be invariant under this, this cyclic rotation means as soon as I have this, this red dot here this green dot and this yellow dot must both be in A. Okay. Why is that? Because if either of them is missing, then when I perform sigma on, on A, you will see that the, the new configuration is not the same as the old configuration. Okay. For example, if A has this, this red dot here and suppose it does not have this, this green dot. Okay. So, imagine this, this red dot is in A, but this, this green dot is not. Okay. Then what will happen if I perform sigma on A, then the new the new set sigma A will contain the green dot, okay? but the original set A does not contain the green dot. Okay? So this property here that this A must be a collection of dots which is invariant under cyclic rotation means the following. As soon as A contains any dot, say the red dot, then it must contain the other dots in that column. So this automatically means this is there, this automatically means this is there. Okay. So, all three guys in a column are automatically there. Okay. So, we have figured out three elements. Now, A has six elements. Let us look, let us assume some other element belongs to A. Let us say this dot was in A. Okay. By the same reasoning, if I apply sigma to A to that yellow dot, when I apply sigma, it will become the red dot. Okay. Which means, since the yellow dot is in A and A is invariant here under the cyclic rotation, it means that this red dot must also be in A. And by the same token, the green dot must also be in A. Okay? So, as soon as any dot in any column is in A, every other dot in that column is also automatically in A. Okay? In other words, we conclude that A must uh, be a union of columns in Z. You take this grid of dots and you take some columns, take the unions of, of the full columns, you cannot have partial columns. Okay? So, think about this, this final conclusion a little bit and convince yourself by looking at a few examples that this is indeed the case. So, the only way in which A can be a fixed point is if it is a union of columns. Okay? And observe the, the reverse inclusion is, is obvious. 
that if it is a union of columns then of course it is it's invariant under the action of of sigma okay now what does that mean uh, a had six elements remember and if it has six elements then since the cardinality of a is six and it's a union of columns a must be a union of how many columns well each column has size 3 so it must be a union of two columns okay so observe this this is exactly the number r that we are talking about 6 is the number pr okay if if you did this in general each column has p, p dots and a was a subset of cardinality pr that means a must be a union of r columns in general okay in our example it is a union of two columns so therefore what have we concluded what are the possible uh, elements what are the elements of the fixed point set well it's all those subsets of z such that a is a union of some two columns of the grid okay like i said in general it's r columns of the grid well what does that mean how many ways how many different a's can you choose so in general the 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 grid has here for example the grid has four columns so what are all the various possibilities for a it can be the union of the first two columns for example or it can be the union of this and this or the union of say this column and the third column and so on and so forth right so the number of different ways of choosing uh, two columns out of the four columns so this is as you can see it is just take the four columns that we have and choose any two out of them so that's going to be the total number of ways of uh, manufacturing elements a which satisfy this this required condition okay and again i have demonstrated all this by example but in general if i did this in general with n and p what we are going to do is you have n columns in z and you have to choose r columns out of them okay so just repeat the argument for the general case okay so all this is sort of i mean i'm i'm trying not to do this overly formally and so on just try to give you a, a visual geometrical idea of what's going on but finally i hope you will convince yourself that we have in fact proved the following that uh, so what have we done in the end we have constructed a set x which is acted upon by a p group which in fact is just a cyclic group here x uh, x has cardinality so this set has cardinality pn choose pr which is all configurations of pr points and the cardinality of the fixed point set is exactly n choose r Okay. So, we have managed to manufacture this and so by finally by the fixed point principle what this means is that uh, Pn choose Pr that is the cardinality of x is congruent to the cardinality of the fixed point set which is n choose r. Okay. So that's sort of the the second um, example, and this will sort of come back when we start talking about Silo's theorem and so on. Uh, but until then, um, you know, just think of this as a, a nice number theoretic consequence of the the uh, fixed point principle.